Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and today we're with John McLean of John McLean Designs. He's out of Los Angeles. He's been on House for several years. He's won Best of House many years in a row for design and service. John, thanks for inviting us into your home. You're going to give us a little virtual tour of your space. And you're in, wh where do you live exactly? It's a mid-century, I, I understand, by sort of a famous architect. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you live. Well, I'm sort of sandwiched between Hollywood and Studio City in the in the Hollywood Hills city. So we're in the lower portion of the hills, but it was um, built by Ray Cappy, as you said. Here's the thing, Rick. I bought this house uh, condo. It's a condo, actually. I bought it sight and scene. I bought it without even... I saw the photos come through on my email, and I was like... Done. My husband was in L.A. Buy it. Ship and, it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So he doesn't know anything about, you know, homes or what quality. He's like, um, it has four walls and a roof. It looks like a house to me. It's fine. And I'm like, no. So he took some photos, and I was like, all right, put the offer in. And it was... And then that's how we That's how we moved forward with it. I knew... I, I knew Ray Cappy. I knew his work. I, I knew I wanted something mid-century. I knew I... I knew I wanted this kind of general vicinity for us. And I, frankly, I wanted something that I could put my stamp on and make it my own, make it kind of fun. And as you know, as a designer, we can design for ourselves in a lot yeah. more risky ways than we can with clients, right? Yeah. So if you took Art Deco and mid-century modern and uh, a little bit of traditional and Hollywood Regency, and you rolled that up in a ball and threw it, that would be what I would call my design style <laughs> and that's what i did with the place and so i was very fortunate to have my own furniture line so i brought a lot of my own furniture pieces into yeah it's beautiful and it's it has like sort of a very uh very serious geometric shapes going on like some very serious trapezoidal kind of things going on then you got the geometric sort of storage happening tell me a little bit about that so perceptive because i did it very intentionally and i designed that way very intentionally because here's the reason Circles, squares, trapezoids, hexagonal, any of the oct octagons, those are not going to go away. They're timeless. They're, I think they're elegant. I think they have a bit of fresh and a bit of modernity to them. And I, I design furniture with them. I design like a layout to room in those different shapes. And if you do those shapes in a home, it's never going to feel staid or tired or uh, outdated. It's going to always feel a bit of fresh to it. And so that's intentional for me. And I do love those, sh all those shapes. I love, I love all the shapes. I'm, I'm, I'm sh <laughs> I love every shape in the world. And I bring them into everything I do. All the shapes. <laughs> Give me all the shapes. All Whatever the you shapes. Got, I'll take them all. Tell me about, tell me a take little bit all. about, a little bit more about the, uh, the pl the stuff that you actually designed your pieces in here is the table yours is the you know what's what's yours in the space so the credenza is mine the bookcases are mine as well i did the bookcases because i designed a built-in bookcase for a client once and i was like you know what i couldn't find a really unique bookcase that i wanted and i thought maybe somebody else is going to have the same issue too hopefully right and then they did and so I started producing them and selling them on my own. I made these very specific. I made them at a height so that they would fit in an eight foot or less ceiling because I know a lot of people live in apartments or uh, homes like mine that only have eight feet tall ceilings. And so that was really important to me. That is um, kind of universal in the way that I designed it. So it's tall enough to fit, but you know it still has a nice substantial look to it and that was really important to me and uh so that's kind of where everything came from in my crazy little head of design and i kind of just brought them all into my house in one fabulous room <laughs> I, I love that the credenza has like this 3d vibe to it well have a few cocktails and it takes on a lot of different feel i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> and but no, I, you're right. That was intentional. I wanted it to be 3D. That's I beautiful. So, John, tell me about the table. The table is really cool looking. I've never seen one like that. Thank you. I had this idea of a mod modular coffee table, and I really wanted it to be able to expand or get smaller. And so, essentially, it, it sold in three sections. I sold in three pieces, smaller groupings. And then, if someone wants to add on other pieces, they can make it larger. So, for me, I think I have six pieces here, maybe um, five, six pieces. And I really wanted it to be able to kind of grow as I needed it to be. So, for instance, if I have 10 people over, I will condense it, push everything to the center so it's a smaller coffee table, or, or I'll even take a few pieces and make them an interval beside a chair if I wanted to. So what was your strategy for this room, given all those windows? So, yeah, I... I, I laid the room out in a, in a very traditional way, and, and this is a no-fail way for anybody watching. This is a no-fail way to lay your space out. You do your sofa in the center, and then you do two chairs flanking 
making that with your coffee table in the center. It, it's it's easy. It's it's a, it's accessible. Um, depending upon the scale of every piece, it always works. So it's a great way to really, if you're at a loft, lay a space out. I really had no other way to do it in this space. So it just worked for me the best. But if uh, if someone watching at home really wants to know how to lay their room out, this is a no fail way. Super easy to do. And it works every time. Tell me about how you hung the art. Now, some people, if they were to see a, you know, a window or something like that, you wouldn't think, oh, that's a place for art. But in this case, you hung it from the ceiling. I thought that was really clever. Thanks. Well, I, again, the what sold me on the building and what sold me on the, the condo was that it was wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling windows. We have two tire uh, walls here that are in entirely glass and it's eight they're eight feet tall um, the doors are eight feet tall so I, I love that part but I was like man I gotta have some art somewhere and I obviously have to have a television so I have my television on the kind of the one wall where it could go and I knew that I wanted art so I was like I'm just gonna hang it from the ceiling and so <laughs> I did and not only is it uh, art on this side but on the opposite side is my patio and then I have a, a dining table out on the patio as well so there's art on the opposite side of this piece that shows through the glass onto the patio to that dining table. So it's almost like there's two levels of art by one piece, like a double-sided fireplace kind of a thing. This piece is super cool because it's, it looks like she has two sets of eyes, but the reason it looks like that is because you walk by, there's a filter on the front, so her eyes kind of follow you across the room uh, <laughs> as you walk in front of her. She's you're great. never alone. You're never alone. <laughs> nope. No, look, she's, she's doing this now. <laughs> Fun. All right, let's see what you did in the kitchen. Well, I, my kitchen was, was also really important for me. So when we bought the place, the kitchen was basically an L shape and it was thrown together kind of cheap cabinetry and cheap countertop. I knew that I loved to cook and I loved to entertain. And there was just one window on the left side. So I can't change anything architecturally on the outside of the building, but on the inside I can. So we actually closed in that window. And instead of having a more small L shaped cramped kitchen, I opened it up and now have this really large U-shaped kitchen. And I decided I wanted to do cabinetry on the left and the right because I really didn't want, I wanted this middle part clean. I, I knew I wanted this wall tile here. I knew I wanted this feature wall. And that's where, of course, I did the mirror tile and the the, uh, the antique mirror. Let me just show you too, because I know a lot of people see this and they're like, oh my God, it's so, it's right. But I don't know if you can pick up on the antiqueness of that. It has this antiquing to it, and it brings in some browns and some golds and some different colors of the of the room. And of course, my countertop, which I really, really love. And it's actually a quartz um, man-made material. And I actually bought this stuff before I had even come up with a kitchen design, because I will make this work. Make it work. I just love it. I chose brass fixtures for all the plumbing fixture and the uh, hardware, but I mixed it with uh, stainless steel. So a lot of people freak out. And you mix stainless steel what are you appliances. Doing? What are you crazy? What are you out yeah. of your mind? Oh my god! That the nerve! <laughs> the nerve! <laughs> this guy. It, but uh, in all seriousness, the, the tie-in piece is the is the mirror tile because the mirror tile has some silver, it has some browns, and it has some golds in it, and it really just ties in everything so that it doesn't feel like everything kind of standing out there on its own. Um, but uh, and then I have I want to have one area for just glass cabinetry, so this is where you'll see like all my you know, serving pieces and so forth. Right. And then I knew we, we, we do eat dinner mostly outside, but um, also I wanted to have a space to eat in the kitchen itself. So I, I, I found this small table. It's a, a, re, a replica of the tulip table, again, from the mid-century time period. And I really wanted something that was my, my own personal style, but also, again, paid homage to the, the era of the house. And that's why I chose this table. And I, I put a, a zebra print hide rug under the bottom. It's not real zebra, of course. And then to make the room feel less heavy, I used these chairs so that they didn't take up any visual weight in space. So when you're looking from a distance, the chairs are actually, they sort of go away. And it also right. brings in and ties in the, the feel of the, uh, of the mirrors, too. One thing I wanted to mention, too, on my flooring. So my flooring looks like real tile and it looks like kind of concrete but it's actually lvt luxury vinyl tile and they're they come in segments and i knew that i didn't want to harm the the wood floor that was beneath my flooring here so i installed this over top if someone down the road ever wants to bring the hardwood back they can totally take this up it just put together but it gives this nice effect of uh it's a bit 
uh, industrial and it's also a bit modern. But what I liked about it was that it grounded the space and it brought in all the color uh, colors that I wanted to use. And it's super, 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 super durable. That part's it, great too. It, does that have a, a softer feel on your like bare foot if you're walking on that? Is it give a little yes. bit? Yes, exactly. It's so comfortable and it's um, waterproof. You don't have to worry about getting it wet. I have it in the bathroom as well. So it's one of those things that I just knew that I wanted. And again, the point that was down before, it's nothing wrong with it. It was just basically painted hardwood. And I don't really want to go through the, the, the ordeal of, of sanding it and changing it around. And plus, I just wanted a different feel. And so this has, again, that industrial feel to it. But it's it's great. How big are the rectangles there? How like how how big are those? Yeah, they're uh, twenty four by thirty six. Pretty okay. big. All right, so pretty big. Yeah, and in in that type of space, from a the way it, uh, your eye reacts to it, the bigger actually makes it look like a bigger space. Very good. Yes, exactly. Very 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 perceptive. That's exactly why I did it. And I, I like bigger tiles, period. Um, but I put them in small spaces, and I even put them, of course, in large spaces. And I've even gone bigger than this. I've done a, a 36 by 48 tile for a really big room before. So it just depends on the space. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. So, John, thank you for inviting us into your beautiful home. It's amazing. I think people will really enjoy learning a little bit more about what went into it. And some of your personal touches there, your your custom stuff is amazing. I imagine you're doing pretty good numbers with that. We hope to see that stuff on house. I hope you're selling it on house, or at least soon. It is, actually. All right. Is, yeah. Nice. I love it. And uh, we'll come out, and maybe we'll do a, a Real House TV episode with you down the road. Uh, find one of your clients, get the full story, and see the reaction from people. We'd love to spend more time with you, and uh, thanks again. My pleasure, Ray. Thank you so much for coming by today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.